Hi. Today we're going to demonstrate the use of a technique known as mathematical induction, using it to derive a formula for something called the binomial expansion, which is used to expand out terms such as this, a plus b to the power n. Firstly, induction is a common method for proving mathematical statements. The concept of it is pretty simple. Firstly, you prove that there is an initial case that obeys some relation, and then you prove that if there is a case that obeys a relation, then it implies that the relation is true for the next case. Let's take a very simple example of proving that every positive integer divided by 1 is itself. So n over 1 equals n, where n is a positive integer. The little e-like symbol here just means belongs to, and the double line z means a set of integers. So as a whole, that sentence reads, proof that n belongs to the set of positive integers. Starting at the third positive integer, n equals 1, we can say 1 over 1 is divisible by 1, so it's true for the first case. Now assume it's true for n in general, and prove that if it's true for any n, it's true for n plus 1. Well, n over 1 equals n. Replacing n with the next positive integer, n plus 1, n plus 1 over 1 is equal to n plus 1. The next step in our formula, n over 1 equals n. We've now shown that if any case n over 1 equals n, the next case of n plus 1 is also true. Since we've proven the case n equals 1 is true, then it's true for all cases of n belongs to the positive integers. QED stands for quadrat demonstrandum and just means which is what has to be proven. So how do we apply this to something like deriving the binomial expansion? We want to expand out a plus b to the power of n for all natural numbers of n. Natural numbers means all positive integers and the number 0. Well let's choose the first case of n equals 0. So what does a plus b to the power of 0 equal? Well we can prove that for positive integers that x to the 0 equals 1. For positive integers, m, x to the m is defined as x multiplied by itself m times. So xm over xn is x multiplied by itself m times divided by x multiplied by itself n times. Since division is the inverse of multiplication, we can see that if n is greater than m, all the x's on the top of the fraction will cancel, giving 1 over x to the power n minus m. Or if m is greater than n, all the x's on the bottom of the fraction will cancel, giving x to the power m minus n. So x over m uh, over x to the n equals x to the m minus n for m greater than n, and 1 over x to the power n minus m for, x, for n greater than n. We define 1 over x to the n to be equal to x to the minus n, so this just gives the case for all positive integers m and m that x to the power m divided by x to the power n equals x to the power m minus n. Now we set n is equal to m, and we get x to the power n divided by x to the power n, which obviously is 1, is equal to x to the power n minus n, which is x to the power naught. So a number divided by itself is equal to 1, a number subtracted by itself is equal to 0, so 1 equals x to the naught for all x. So a plus b to the power naught must equal 1. We need to now define a new function known as the factorial is re represented by this little exclamation mark. n factorial for integer n means n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 and so on until it gets down to 1. So 5 factorial will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We also define 0 factorial is equal to 1. So now we can rewrite a plus b to the naught is equal to 1. And now we're going to write this in a bit of a weird way like this equation here, and then we can rewrite this in terms of factorials n and k. And then we can rewrite this simply as summation of one term up to n where n is equal to zero. Now this equation here is what we're saying will be the binomial expansion. So we've proven that a plus b to the naught follows this equation. Now to use mathematical induction, we need to now prove if it's true for the case n, it's true for the case m plus 1. Well, a plus b to the power m plus 1 is just a plus b multiplied by a plus b to the power n. Since a plus b to the power m plus 1 for integer n just means a plus b multiplied by itself m plus 1 times. And a plus b to the n just means a plus b multiplied by itself n times. So you just have to multiply it once more to get a plus b to the m plus 1. Substituting in the binomial formula for the case a plus b to the n, we get this. 
Now use the distributed property to convert this into sums multiplied by a plus b. Now a multiplied by a to the k is just a to the k plus 1, and b multiplied by b to the n minus k is just b to the m plus 1 minus k. Now we can rewrite k plus 1 as m and k as m minus 1 in the left summation to get this equation. The lower limits is changed to m equals 1 as 0 plus 1 equals 1 in k plus 1 equals m, and the upper limit is changed to m plus 1 as m plus 1 is equal to m plus 1. So let's now try to get the summations to have the same limits. Well for the right summation, let's just take out the k equals 0 case, to raise the k equals 1. So the k equals 0 term is put out to the front here, which then ends up as this. m factorial over m factorial is 1, so we end up with just b to the m plus 1. Now the left summation still ends one higher than the right summation. So let's take out the m plus 1 term from the left summation to drop that limit by 1, which gets us this term here. Canceling these terms, such as 1 minus 1 is 0 and so forth, we get to this. We write in the b to the n minus m minus in the first summation, in the same way as it's written in the first summation, we get n plus 1 minus m. Now the m's and k's are just dummy variables that go around the sum. It doesn't matter what we call them, so let's just rename the m as k to make it easier to compare the two summations. Now let's just combine the two summations into one. We can see now they both have this term a to the k multiplied by b to the m plus 1 minus k. So using the distribution property, let's just rewrite it as two terms added together multiplied by this. Now that we've done that, we can see it definitely looks a bit like the binomial formula before for m plus 1, but it has these two terms added together that don't look awfully like what it should be in the binomial formula for m plus 1. Let's add them together and see what we get. Rewriting the term that takes up less space on the page first, just because it looks a bit nicer, and also rewriting n minus k minus 1 as n minus k plus 1 in the right hand term. Multiplying the left hand term by n minus k plus 1 divided by n minus k plus 1, and then the right hand term by k divided by k, we can do this because k over k is 1, so it's just multiplied by 1, which doesn't change it. Now we've got n minus k factorial multiplied by n minus k plus 1 left hand term. This is just n minus k plus 1 factorial, since from the definition of factorial, n minus k plus 1 factorial is n minus k plus 1 multiplied by n minus k, multiplied by n minus k minus 1, and so on. k minus 1 factorial multiplied by k is k factorial, for the same reason. Both fractions are now divided by the same amount, so we can add the top of the fraction together. Using the distributed property to rewrite the top of the fraction as a term multiplied by n factorial, we find we can cancel out the minus k plus k, and we now get another term that can be simplified into 1 factorial, m factorial multiplied by m plus 1, giving us m plus 1 factorial. Rewriting the bottom term, just grouping the n with the plus 1, and putting the k factorial after the term, and taking up more space on the page. Now we can substitute this back into the summation from earlier, to get this here. Now we want it to be a summation starting from k or 0, since that's what the binomial formula is. But we can see that the term in front of b to the m plus 1, can be took into the summation, reducing the first term to k equals 0. Now we want the upper limit to be m plus 1, but we can also see that a to the n plus 1 is equal to this at k equals m plus 1, so we can bring that inside and raise the limit. We can now see that this is the equation of the binomial theorem with n substituted for m plus 1. So we prove that if any n is true, then m plus 1 is true. We've also proven that n equals 0 is true, so we've now proven this for n is any natural number. This actually extends to n is any real number, however we don't know enough yet to prove, to prove this. Once we've proven some more things, we'll come back to this and prove that any real number.